is a really important video for me because I explain why I don't call myself a green beauty blogger anymore. And let's just dive right in. First off, what is green beauty? Depends on who you ask, it can mean so many different things. You have kind of a spectrum of what green or clean beauty is. On one end, obviously, traditional product. Then here you have non-toxic products, but still products that use synthetics or ingredients that are created in a lab. Then you have, you know, sees green beauty as products that are plant-based, so there's no synthetics whatsoever. Then you have the group over here that says, okay, but green beauty has to be, you know, plant-based ingredients only, no synthetics, organic, sustainably farmed, cruelty-free, vegan. So there's like this whole spectrum. I found myself kind of more here, starting out in like the non-toxic group, and then I explored a lot of the plant-based products, and then went over to the organic, and you know, like the super clean, ethically sourced, sustainably farmed ingredients. So I feel like I've explored the full range and realize that there are good products along this entire spectrum and it's really about finding what works for your skin and for me putting myself into a box and saying okay I can only use products from this section on the spectrum was limiting me and I didn't have my best skin so now that I've explored the entire range and realize okay yeah there are like one or two products that maybe have an ingredient in them that is not the best, but it works really well for my skin. Is it the end of the world if I use that product, even though I use 90% green products? No, of course not. It's just like with eating, right? Like I try to eat organic, really clean food, but I can't do it 100% of the time. And there are times where I do wanna get Del Taco or have the McDonald's breakfast, which, you know, both are loaded with hydrogenated vegetable oils, which go through a very severe um, chemical bleaching process, which contaminates those oils that the foods are fried in and is horrible for your body. But every once in a while, you want to indulge and it's okay. It's not the end of the world. Or at least like that's my choice, right? That's what I want for myself is kind of that 80-20 balance. I just decided that I needed that 80-20 balance not only in the rest of my life, you know, with exercise or eating, I really needed it when it came to beauty. So first I just wanna explain why I went non-toxic or green in the first place. And it was because I was dealing with adult acne. I had flawless skin when I was in my teens and it was kind of <laughs> like a sick joke actually to give me flawless skin all throughout that period because I just had this belief that, okay, I don't really have to take care of my skin or do anything at all. Like I would fall asleep in my makeup. You know, I sometimes wouldn't use moisturizer. I never use sunscreen. I mean, I just did nothing to take care of my skin and it looked fantastic. But then when I got into my early 20s, it's almost like all of that neglect over the years finally built up and was like, hey, you've been neglecting us, so now we're gonna freaking explode. And I had adult acne, I had dermatitis. So it sent me down this rabbit hole of trying to understand how can I fix my skin. I went to dermatologists and kind of got the same answer over and over again. Oh, here's antibiotics. Oh, here's like a topical cream but nothing that lasted long term. So I put it upon myself to find the right solution with products. That went on for about a couple years. And during that time, I learned so much about ingredients. I started removing a lot of products that I was using that contained synthetic fragrances, contained parabens, contained sulfates, which are strong foaming agents that they put in cleansers. I started eliminating those biggies and my skin improved and I was like, okay, maybe this is maybe this is the route I need to go to have my best skin yet. I started going deeper and deeper down the green beauty hole. Now what ended up happening is that I started to get like little tiny pustulates, little tiny red um, bumps like around my mouth, my chin, my nose. And I thought, oh my God, I have acne again, right? It wasn't acne. I found out later that I had perioral dermatitis, inflammatory skin issue. Skin becomes inflamed because there's something that you're putting on top of it that's irritating it. A lot of the skincare products, completely organic and plant-based, actually started to irritate my skin. And I found it's, it was because a lot of them use strong essential oils as both the fragrance and the preservative of the products. Essential oils are extremely strong, small particle size, so they're able to penetrate deeply into the skin. And if you have super sensitive skin like I do, they can be very irritating. So what I realized is that I have to cherry pick which green products I can use that work well for my skin and combine it with some of the non-toxic synthetic products and even a couple of the traditional sick skincare products. And I just pick 
from the entire spectrum to find what works best for me. And it's ended up being about an 80-20%. 80% of the products I use in terms of skincare are non-toxic, green, organic, like this whole group. But then there's about 20% of them that aren't. And it just has worked out better. And so that's why I eliminated that label. Now, with that being said, I just want to share with you guys my nighttime skincare routine for winter 2019 and share with you what I'm using, what I'm loving. But before I do, I just want to let you know that I am going to be announcing at the end of this video a giveaway and how you can win everything that's in my nighttime skincare routine. So stay tuned for information on how you guys can enter that. So I do a really intense cleanse. And the reason is because I wear makeup and sunscreen every day. One of the things that I learned after having adult acne in my early 20s is if I don't wash every last tiny bit of makeup and sunscreen off, I'm gonna get acne the next day. It just is what it is. And I just wake up and I have a pimple and I know that's because I didn't wash my face well enough. I used to think, oh, that makeup ingredient or that makeup product is causing me to break out. But once I started washing my face super, super thoroughly, I rarely ever get breakouts anymore. First cleanse that I do is the oil cleanse. And right now I've been loving this Pie Rose Hip Cleansing Oil. The reason I like it so much is because rose hip oil actually can lighten like little dark sunspots or little red acne marks. And I just noticed I have such a bright, clear complexion when I use this cleansing oil really consistently. So this is the first thing I do to remove makeup. And then sometimes I'll actually do it a second time on my bare skin. The second cleanse that I do is a scrub. And this is probably like the fourth or fifth bottle of Dr. Roebuck's Byron 2-in-1 Mask and Scrub that I've gone through. I like that it uses jojoba beads. I have really sensitive skin, as I mentioned before. And jojoba beads are actually the best type of physical exfoliant for sensitive skin. And they're friendly they're biodegradable so I do it I do the scrub always do a foaming cleanse next then I've been using the Versed um, gel cleanser it has rose water and seaweed extract which is seaweed, seaweed is amazing for the skin it's really anti-inflammatory but I like how or budget friendly the Verse skincare products are. I'd say this is a non-toxic beauty brand that you can find at Target, and all of their products are under twenty dollars. This cleanser is, you know, cruelty-free, vegan, fragrance-free, dye-free, paraben-free, petroleum-free. Like you go down the whole list, and it's just a really clean, basic product that's super affordable. Then this is at nighttime only. I'll do an exfoliating um, toner. This one I really like from Iuna, but it's super expensive. It's like $100, and, but it works so well. If you guys are familiar with Biologique biolog 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 Recherche, I can never pronounce that, even though I took four years of French, sorry. <laughs> Biologique Recherche, they have their P50 toner is like famous in the beauty community. If you haven't heard of it, you're living under a rock, but um, it's not the cleanest product. And so this is actually a clean beauty dupe for the Biologique Recherche P50, um, and I really like it. It uses a couple different blends of very gentle acids and fruit enzymes to exfoliate the skin, but it's so gentle, and it has in it a variety of pre and probiotics to balance out the skin microbiome. So if you're dealing with um, you know, inflammatory skin issues or a weakened barrier, you definitely want to use something with probiotics in it. So I love this one, but if you can't splurge on the this one because it is $98, this is a nice alternative that's less expensive. This is the Dermay Radiance Toner. If you just want something that's going to exfoliate and reduce inflammation, this is a good one. I was actually super scared of this because when I read the label and I saw that it has glycolic acid, I was like, oh shit, I can't use this. But actually, I used it, you know, I can't use it every day, but I'll use it, you know, a couple times a week and it works really well for sensitive skin. So after I use a toner and exfoliate, then I apply a face mask. This face mask by Five Vina is one of my all-time favorite green sheet masks. I once went to meet my girlfriend, Christine, to go to a boxing class, and it was in the morning. I didn't have time to do my full skincare routine, so I actually just threw this mask on while I drove to go meet her at our boxing class, and when I got there, I ripped the mask off and just walked in, and I went up to her, and she was like, what the fuck? She was like, your skin is glowing. You look flawless, and I was like, holy shit, it's because of this mask. Um, it has in it a blend of peptides, which stimulates collagen, as well as some plant hyaluronic acid. But the main benefit of this mask and what makes them really special is that they use a blend of traditional Chinese herbs that have a range of benefits from reducing inflammation to promoting microcirculation and just deeply nourishing and hydrating the skin. Um, I use this like a couple times a week at night and I just notice that my skin is more luminous and plumper and just really improve. So if you're looking for a good non-toxic sheet mask, this is a great one. Then after doing the sheet mask, I wait until my skin is completely dry for the next product. 
Curology's Retinol Serum. Now, the reason I wait for my skin to be completely dry is you always want to put a retinol product on dry skin. If you put it on damp skin, the product is going to absorb deeper and you could get, you know, have more of a sensitized reaction to the retinol. This one by Curology, I've really been loving. It's a personal blend or custom blend that they made for me and it includes 4% niacinamide, which is vitamin B. Vitamin B is really important for maintaining hydration levels in the skin. So if you have dehydrated skin, check out niacinamide. Then it has 0.02% tretinoin, and tretinoin is a prescription strength retinol, and then I'm using like the lowest of the lowest levels, like 0.02% is like almost nothing, but it's just enough for me to get those cell renewal stimulating benefits of retinol. It also has azelaic acid 5%, which is on the lower end because you can get products um, over the counter that have up to 10% um, azelaic acid in them. And azelaic acid is fantastic for fighting acne breakouts because it kills P. acne's bacteria. And it also speeds cell turnover, so, and it lightens pigment spots and um, post-inflammatory marks. I've been loving this. I use it every night for like a couple of weeks, and then I take like a one-week break, and then I use it again for a few more weeks and kind of just stagger it like that. And I only use it during the colder months when I'm indoors more and I'm not in the sun because retinol can severely sensitize your skin to the sun, so you don't want to use it during the summertime. That's just what I recommend. Once the retinol serum is completely absorbed and my skin is pretty much dry, then I go in with my hydrating water serums. The first serum I do is basically a plant-based hyaluronic acid serum by OC of Malibu. I love this. This serum is award-winning and there's a reason for it. It contains the proprietary blend of algae and seaweed extract that they get from like Patagonia, which is organic and you know far from pollution so it's really really pure but seaweed and algae it just is such an intense anti-inflammatory ingredient and it's full of minerals and antioxidants that are really nourishing for the skin so i apply this serum and then next i top it off with the inculus polyglutamic acid now this skincare brand i really love for two reasons one each one of their products is super simple like this the name of this is polyglutamic acid and that's like the main active ingredient in here and there's like nothing else then they have a hyaluronic acid serum which basically is just hyaluronic acid and so forth and so forth and so forth so it's really clear to understand the product that you're buying what you're getting and the price point is really affordable. This serum is $14.99, and what I love about it is that it's very similar to hyaluronic acid in the sense that it brings water into the skin and deeply hydrates it, but the molecule size is actually four times larger than hyaluronic acid, and so it's gonna keep in even more water than hyaluronic acid. But that's why I do a combination of both, a hyaluronic acid serum and then the polyglutamic acid serum. Now, I've put a lot of water onto my skin and it needs to be held in by an oil. So lastly, I finish with my all-time favorite oil by Flora and Bass. This is my third bottle of this. This is their Age Adapting Facial Serum. It's so good. I, I tell everyone that I know that they need to start using cannabis CBD oil because it's insanely anti-inflammatory and reduces redness so well without clogging the pores. It has a light slip and texture to it. I just love this one so much and it works really well in tandem with ret my retinol serum because my retinol serum does make me a little bit red around my chin and my nostril area, but this cannabis CBD oil does such a good job at reducing the redness that I just, like the next morning I wake up and my skin is visibly less red. So taking CBD orally and applying it topically every night, I really feel has improved my skin, my hair, my mood, everything so much. I sleep better. It's just great that inflammation is being reduced both internally and topically. So I highly recommend that if you're looking to try a CBD product, start out with trying Flora and Bass Age Adapting Serum um, for the face if you have redness, or try taking one of the sleep tinctures for at night, either Juna's Nightcap or Flora and Bass um, Sleep Tincture, because you're gonna notice such an improvement in your skin. Okay guys, that was a lot. I feel like I just talked and talked and talked and talked and talked, and if you made it this far, I'm gonna give you the details for my giveaway. 
you can win everything that I just discussed and use in my nighttime skincare routine. All you have to do is subscribe to my YouTube channel, like this video, comment down below, and then go check out my Instagram page at Avant and follow me there for other great skincare, beauty, and cosmetic treatments. I can feel it. You are the one, oh baby, be mine I can feel it